There's no more effective way of pinpointing a problem or potential problem than locating its source through the process of troubleshooting. And to troubleshoot effectively, one must analyze the problem, its probable causes, and the necessary actions to correct the problem. No wonder troubleshooting is considered an art. Anyone can shotgun an engine's problem, but it's extremely costly for the owner, pilot, and it teaches the technician nothing. Precision Air Motive's suggested troubleshooting procedure for engines, their systems and components follows five basic steps. First, study the symptoms. Secondly, isolate the system affected. Now, determine the probable causes. Then, check and repair the system. And finally, test and document your actions. This segment of our video aids the owner-operator in the troubleshooting technique for the RSA fuel injection system. Of course, read all bulletins carefully before removing a unit for compliance. Take careful note of the section which identifies the units affected by the bulletin and by the part number and serial number if listed. First of all, grab an inspection run-up sheet. You'll find one, which may be copied by the way, on page 2 of Precision Air Motive's Troubleshooting Techniques for the RSA Fuel Metering System Manual, Form 15810B, technically speaking. Note that the inspection run-up sheet is divided into two sections, pre- and post-inspection. Remember, the more information you can supply to the factory, the better the factory can help you isolate your problem. Information like parts list numbers, how many total hours since a major overhaul on the servo unit, the engine size and number, and so on, are very helpful. I think there's air in my fuel system. What's going on? So, you think there might be air in your fuel system. Okay, let's take a look. First, take a 12 to 14 inch length of clear Teflon tubing and connect it between the servo unit fuel line and flow divider. This tubing should be clamped between two AN style fittings. Now, start and run your engine and watch for air bubbles. It's very important that you not run your engine, by the way, without the cowling for sustained periods of time as engine damage might occur. If air bubbles are discovered, locate their source. The primary sources are deteriorated fuel hoses, deteriorated main fuel pump inlet fitting seals, Take a look at Lycoming Service Bulletin 374 for more information on this one. Airframe boost pump shaft seal leakage. Damaged cones and flares on fuel line fittings. And fuel lines routed too close to the exhaust system. By the way, fuel fittings and lines can leak air and not fuel. If having the boost pump on improves operation, then a leaky fitting or hose is possible between the boost pump and the main fuel pump. A large air leak or boost pump shaft seal leak may not give improved operation with the boost pump on. What is going on? Lately, when I'm in idle cutoff, my engine has a tendency to run on. What gives? Keep in mind that when your throttle's in idle cutoff position, the manual mixture control on the RSRSA fuel injector will only reduce fuel flow sufficiently to stop the engine. It is not intended as a fuel shutoff valve. If your engine has the tendency to run on with the mixture in idle cutoff, better check the integrity of the servo unit. First, disconnect the fuel outlet lines from the servo. A flexible hose or clear tube can be attached to direct fuel from an end nozzle into a separate container. A baby bottle's perfect because it's calibrated in cc's. Whatever the container, the measurement process is critical. Now, Open the throttle approximately halfway and place the mixture control level in the idle cutoff position. Turn on the boost pump and look for leakage from the outlet. Allow two minutes for this test. Hopefully there's no leakage. Great! If there is a leak, measure the amount of captured fuel and divide by two, or however many minutes you let the boost pump run. This value is the cutoff valve leakage. Now don't be upset if it leaks. Even new units directly from the factory are allowed to leak up to 5 cc's per minute. If leakage exceeds 7 to 8 cc's per minute, dive into Bendix Service Information Letter 16, Revision 2, or later, to repair the servo. My engine at idle sounds like a discontented duck. What do I do to smooth it out? Though attempting to smooth out the idle speed, off-idle stumble is normally the result of having the following items misadjusted. 
the idle mixture link was misadjusted too long or too short. The idle speed adjustment was backed out too far, compensating for a possible induction leak. Or, the magneto to engine timing was advanced from 3 to 5 degrees past the manufacturer's recommendations to smooth out the idle after the first two adjustments. Now, to correct the off-idle stumble situation, first, remove the idle mixture link and reset to the proper settings as set forth by the Master Clevis settings for parts lists in the Troubleshooting Techniques Manual, pages 11 through 13. Then, reinstall the idle mixture link. Again, refer to the Master Clevis settings list for exact Clevis settings for a particular parts list control. Of course, referencing this Master Clevis settings list is vital. Next, time the magnetos to the engine. Refer to the engine manufacturer's instructions. Now, start your engine and let it warm up. Then, set the idle speed to the recommended speed. Set the idle mixture to obtain a 25 to 50 RPM rise. Be sure to clear your engine after each adjustment. And now, reset the idle speed as necessary. If off-idle stumble persists, here are some possible causes. There's an intake manifold air leak. Perhaps the manifold drains are sticking open. Or there might be loose pipes or damaged couplings or O-rings. There might be a damaged nozzle or plugged air bleed. Perhaps the magneto internal timing might be wrong or shifted. The flow divider might be sticking open. There might be air in the fuel system or the servo unit regulator is contaminated. In that case, send it in for repair. It's important to note that idle speed and mixture adjustments may be made with the boost pump on or off. If there's a noticeable shift in the engine's operation at idle with the boost pump on versus off, your servo unit might need to be returned for correction of pressure sensitivity. Take the time to troubleshoot effectively. You'll save money time, and headaches. Remember, read all bulletins carefully before removing a unit for compliance. If you're in doubt, call us and ask for help.